Remember, this show is PG-13, so you might hear a naughty word or two. Gymnasts for Change has made a huge, huge, huge change at British Gymnastics, and we're going to talk about it. Updates on your favorite elites in NCAA, international power ranking, fight to the death! Me and Spencer agree on everything. It's not a problem, you guys. Mm. College Gymnastics elevator pitch for new fans and how to be ahead of the game before season starts. We're going to tell you all the college things. It's December 4th, 2023. Welcome to Gymcastic, the number one gymnastics podcast in the galaxy. <laughs> I'm Jessica. And I'm here with Spencer from the Balance Beam Situation. I'm so excited to talk about the first most important thing in the news. Okay. Tell me Spencer. about it. Okay. Remember how, like, a bunch of Olympians and gymnasts uh, in the British system, like, three years ago, I think it was, started Gymnasts for Change. And mm -hmm. they, it was, like, a big deal. And they felt like, oh, my God, should we really do this? Because we are up for another Olympic team. And this is going to put our spots at risk. And, um, and people felt like they were going to get retaliated against. And it was a big deal. But they all went ahead anyway. And now, like, Danusha Francis is on as part of the executive non-executive member of a booby boob whatever safeguarding at british gymnastics um and working with the fig you guys we did safe sport in the u.s and it's better but it's really just about preventing crimes what british gymnastics th has done now and what gymnasts for change have accomplished is so far ahead of the game it's revolutionary it is huge people have been talking about this stuff in the united states for years and they've done it spencer tell us what they've done yeah, so they released um new safeguarding policies basically specifically regarding hydration weighing gymnasts and education to all in the interest of the welfare of gymnasts so hydration rules are gymnasts have to be provided with opportunities to drink regularly throughout a gymnastic session or activity. One would think that is a very logical, obviously normal, any human being would do that, but we need a rule for it, because right. gymnastics. With gymnasts um, encouraged to consume fluids as they feel comfortable to, and if a gymnast requires the toilet during, during a gymnastic session or activity, they must be able to go at the earliest available opportunity. The bathroom thing? Mm -hmm. is huge it is a major you would think this isn't a thing because people know especially with tumbling or when you vault like women have a shorter urethra you want to make sure you have an empty bladder before you tumble or vault because you can have escaped pee and the pelvic uh floor issue and all of this like everybody goes to the bathroom before floor I, I just, there are still gyms that try to restrict how many times during a practice gymnasts can go to the bathroom. Not to mention, some people need to change their tampon every hour or whatever they have. It's it's not like a, everyone has the, or what if people have an issue? Like, I don't need to explain why this mm -hmm. shouldn't be an issue. You don't have to explain an why people have to go to the bathroom. Right. But <laughs> we save that for behind the scenes, where it's <laughs> mostly talking about why people have to go to the bathroom. Um <laughs> Other issue, other part, weighing gymnasts. So Huge. weighing of gymnasts must always be their choice and must only be undertaken by qualified sports science or medical practitioners with the gymnast's optimal long-term development in mind with clear scientifically valid rationale. Only gymnasts over 10 can be weighed in a gymnastic setting and weight data must always be combined with another measure. Coaches must not weigh gymnasts. These are so excellent and clear and perfect. Coaches must not weigh gymnasts because you are not a medical professional. And you can't just weigh people out of context. Mm -hmm. There has to be another measure you're looking at specifically with it. I it is this is so science-based, excellent, and proper in every way. I'm so pleased about this. And I mean, this is still a problem in the United States. At a lot of gyms, not to mention, we know of a college coach, very prominent college coach, who was still coaching three years ago and was, we heard at the live show um, at NCAAs, which we do every year, we're going to do it again this year, uh, that there was a coach still weighing gymnasts three years ago, regular weigh-ins. Like, and this was in the um, Washington Post piece, um, the Emily yeah. Jean Balvo's talking about LSU. Yep. Uh, so there you go. Uh, it's all out there. 
So the next part, which I think is, you would think this is the most basic thing, but let's talk about this, which we don't have in the U.S. Academic education, which we don't have in the U.S. One <laughs> might think if they've observed all of culture. Um, <laughs> academic education, gymnasts, clubs, and coaches must ensure that the missing of formal education for gymnastics club training must not be a mandatory requirement for any child. Gymnastics club training must not be scheduled during formal education time, i.e. school hours, for children under the age of 12. Children over the age of 12 must only miss formal education time for club training under exceptional circumstances and on the condition that the child's academic education is not compromised. You can't be like, if you want to come to this gym and train elite, you have to homeschool because we only have practice during adult work hours. You can't do that during like you have to work around school. And like, I don't have a problem with like gymnasts leaving school like an hour early because obviously they don't need stupid PA, PE. They do need <laughs> health. They don't need PE. Oh my God. The and, uh, but while we're at it, like physics, <laughs> a bonus. Really, they're, it's not necessary. They're doing it every day. They don't yeah, need really. to learn it. Yeah. Come yeah. On. Um, I, this is huge because there are so many gyms that operate like this. And there are so many gymnasts who honestly... They have not gotten a basic education. I mean, I feel like this is something that um, Michaela Maroney talked about in her interview, too, was like, I, at a certain point, I had to decide, am I going to be great at school or great at gymnastics? I can't do both. And like, you know, I had to finish high school on her own. And this is, you know, and obviously people have things happen in their lives that interrupt schooling, but it shouldn't be an optional gymnastics practice that you want to do. So like, how do you think this would go over in the United States if we had a rule? Because, by the way, we don't have any of these rules in the United no. States. No. Um, the Maniacal laughter from thing. Spencer, if you didn't catch that. That's what that was. Yeah. Because I would say in the United States, the but what about my business, the health of my business argument is valued ahead of like children, the health, the health, of, a, the health of a child. It's like, oh, but my business might lose money. Oh, well, then that's the most important thing. And everything else is secondary to that, which is why I think it probably wouldn't happen and wouldn't go over well. I feel like anybody who, if they made that rule, then every gym would just be like, oh, tell USA Gymnastics you're doing homeschooling, which is what they do. Mm -hmm. But like, is yeah. homeschooling, some homeschooling is great. Some homeschooling is complete bullshit so and and it's still the rule would apply that training can't be scheduled during education time even if you're homeschooling right your school hours are still your school hours and you right. still can't have gymnastics training then yeah my big question about this i mean then you go to great rules how are these enforced are yeah. they enforced and how do you how do, do you have eyes in a gym to see whether a coach is weighing a gymnast when they're not supposed to, which is the next question of practicality. Tattletales. This is the most important lesson mm. from these rules. The, the, he, the true heroes, the unsung heroes of life, tattletales. Yes. Tattletales with a phone that they're recording what's happening. Um, and educated parents who tell their kids, like, here's the rules. So if this happens, tell me. Uh, and parents who make sure that they don't take their kids out of school and not tell anyone because it can be done. Sean Johnson, prime example, Olympic champion, went to regular school because her coach believed in education and having a regular life. <sighs> yeah. I'm so happy about this. So congrats to ev all the, the women and men and gymnasts for change who made this happen because we know British Gymnastics voted for it, but you guys are the were the motor behind this. And I'm just, you guys, send them to the Middle East next. They can do anything. Climate change. This is the next thing that they could fix. Gymnasts for change. I believe in you. You can have a, you can make a solution. We have some news out of uh Florida, oh, which is not happy. Must must we talk about it? So oh. Riley McCusker is injured. She posted a picture of a boot. It's very devastating. She posted a beautiful bars routine and then said, bummer, too bad. You all have to wait until next year to see this with a picture of her foot in a boot. And 
I've I would like to exercise some plausible deniability that we just see a boot. And so like maybe it's all a prank or a bad dream and she's not actually injured and out for the season, but maybe that's not the most realistic take. <laughs> yeah. She posted an update with a, a surgery uh pick, so who knows? Maybe, you know, she won't have to red shirt a whole year and we can hope for the best. But she said next year. So mm -hmm. that usually means she's out for a whole year. Oh, so maybe she's going to come back bionically and we'll finally see her do floor in college once she's all healthy and recovered. I would love that. Speaking of that and being healthy and recovered and great things that can help your gymnastics career when you're recovering or at home. This month's Tumble Track is having a sale. It's a home holiday deals. Mm. All the things you can work out on at home. Bars, mats, beams, home air floors, and home air tracks, which I love so much, you guys. So you can get an additional 5% off orders over $4.99. So check it out at Tumble Track. Visit Tumble Track, T U M B L T R A K, tumbletrack.com, train smart. Norbert's has a sale on domino mats and mini domino cartwheel blocks. Go to norbert's.net for a 10% discount on anything with the code GYMCASTICDECEMBER. Norbert's is also giving away a $50 gift card that can be used on anything in their online store, no minimum. Just follow Norbert's Athletic on Instagram and then like and comment on the giveaway post. Also happening this month, you can give the gift of GYMCASTIC as a gift. You can literally buy a membership for someone else. Just make sure you put, you know, gift in the box and fill it out. And if you want to, we will record a message for them. So you have something you can show them here, open your gift and then whatever it can be like, look at the phone and there'll be a video of us saying, congratulations, so-and-so you've got the greatest gift that of Christmas that's ever happened. Whatever holiday you're welcome, Jimcastic. You have a blah, blah, blah membership. And, and maybe it'll be better scripted than that. <laughs> <laughs> blah, 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 you're welcome. Blah, 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 you're welcome, I think is a wonderful. Like, I think you should make Christmas gift tags that just say blah, 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 you're welcome. Instead of all this to so-and-so, love so-and-so, just blah, 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 you're welcome. Oh, yeah. And Spencer will be this enthusiastic when oh. we record it. And if mm. you just want him to do it, I'm volunteering him to do that as well. <laughs> Check it out at jocastic.com. Join the club tab. And make sure to fill out the it's a gift area and email. Okay. More news we have. Yeah. Let's get some of the, we're going to get the bad news out of the way and then we can yeah. be like more fun because we also learned this week that Lindenwood University is cutting its gymnastics team after this coming season, the 2024 season. So Lindenwood, which is one of the newest teams that started in 2013, so they've barely been around for any time at all. Um, they've been incredibly successful as a D2 team. They reached regionals of among all the D1 teams, all the, the main regionals in 2019. Um, they won USAG Nationals last year. So this is very, very upsetting that the program is going to be cut, especially because we're on such a streak of adding teams. Yes. Three new teams last year, three new teams this year. It was like, oh, we're getting the numbers back up. It's growing back to when we had, you know, 200 some women's college gymnastics teams. So this is uh, an unfortunate step backward. Yeah, I'm super bummed for them. I watched their like, you know, promo video for the season and they look so good and so stoked. Um, and it's such a bummer. Uh, yeah. And for all the little gymnasts that were excited to watch them and went to watch their, you know, practices. And I'm just, it's really sad. So I don't know. Who knows though? Programs have been saved. You never know what'll happen. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to go back to revisit something that we talked about from the emergency podcast last week when we were on vacation about Canada and uh the lifetime ban ish of Elvira Sadi. And then we talked about Davidova being uh, suspended. She's just being investigated right now. Um, and I wanted to revisit specifically um, Elvira Sadi. So two-time Olympic champion for the Soviet Union, Canadian elite coach for a long time. So she's been suspended. Um, and originally, uh, it was that she was suspended basically until she's 81 from coaching because and she can't even volunteer. She can't be on a committee. She can't judge. Nothing, 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 nothing. 
Um, and this is specifically from a story from TSN who got a copy of the panel decision. And one of the things that they said was that she routinely weighed gymnasts, see, going back to the British rules that are so good, encouraging them to push through uh, injuries manipulated her athletes' weight, eating, and drinking habits by restricting their food and water intake. British rules addressing this. USA Gymnastics doesn't have this. If there is a rule like this in USA Gymnastics, I don't know about it. Please let me know. But I read through all the safe sport rules yesterday just to make sure I wasn't missing this. Um, and I saw nothing. Um, also that she was encouraging them to use supplements at times as alternatives to food. Um, restricting social interactions when they were at competitions like the Olympics, rejecting the opinions of medical professionals, um, and was physically and verbally abusive. But a lot of people asked, then why is she allowed to educate coaches? So she is allowed after 10 years the limited opportunity quote to coach following her suspension in recognition of Saudi's experience and technical skill uh, intended to benefit the gymnastic community once appropriately contextualized by adherence to safe sport practices. That is why Canadian gymnastics uh, is allowing her or the panel that made the decision is allowing her to coach coaches. Coach African. coaches, but not coach, coach gymnasts. Never gymnasts, none of the other stuff, but can coach coaches. Agree or disagree with this? She'll be 81 then. Disagree. Because why? Why is this? Why would you need, if you decide that this person is not fit to coach gymnasts, why would they be fit to coach coaches? Yep. And I need an explanation of what they mean by appropriately contextualized by adherence to safe work practices. Like if she's going to give a start with a speech. Pass of, some tests and do some yeah. things or. Yeah. And start with an opening statement that's like, here are all the things that were damaging and cost me literally my entire career. And this is why it was wrong to do them. And so start with that speech to everyone and mean it first, then I think no. It's not okay. Even so, I mean, how many you could, f there should be, you know, you could find 50 coaches who are experienced and haven't done these things who could train those coaches. Yes. But why not just is. get one of them? and not someone who you've suspended uh, for abusive coaching. Yep. Spencer, everybody, he should be in charge. Another excellent sweater you're wearing today, too, Spencer. Thank you. Thank you. Spencer's outfit game has really been <laughs> on point. I added Christmas lights behind me, but that's as much as I've done. Speaking of Christmas lights and the coming of the new year. Ah, NCAA season is coming up. College gymnastics is coming up starting in January. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, college and cocktails is coming. The, the most important <laughs> part. Our favorite part, our favorite time of the year, truly. It is so fun, you guys. We pick a meet to watch together. We watch as a family. And then we all get together afterwards and talk about it. And it's a live Q&A. You can submit questions ahead of time if you want to, too. Um, it's really fun. And this year, we're going to try different times to like mess with the schedule a little bit to see if you know we can include some people in other countries more instead of just having it in the evenings, West Coast time. Like do some things to, to see how we can help you guys get more involved. But it's so fun. We pick a mocktail or cocktail every week. And it's so fun, you guys. But I want to tell you guys, because we have so many people that are either have just found uh, gymnastics or have just gotten into elite, but they're not, they don't really know about college gymnastics. Mm -hmm. And this is the time when you thought you were just an elite fan, but we suck you in slowly. <laughs> By telling yeah. you how much you're going to love it and how fun it is on Friday nights. We do and having so many inside jokes that you don't get unless you've been watching college gymnastics. It's all part of our evil plan. Yes. You see, the people we get like, all the time, people write in and they're like, you know, I listen to the show because of Elite and I think college gymnastics is stupid because everything's just like a double tuck and people are screaming all the time. The scores don't make any sense. But then I started watching it and I still have those complaints, but also I can't stop talking about it. Which is also a solid, solid strategy. It's all part of our plan. Yes. Um, and if you really want a solid strategy for you're new to it and you really want to get into it, do join one of the fantasy leagues. Like Jim Lytics is one that people really like. Uh, so check it out because then you'll be so addicted with your own fantasy team. Okay. So I want to explain. We'll explain more details and how things work as we get into season because there's mm -hmm. many nuances 
And we're going to start with that in a minute. But first, I want to pitch. This is my elevator pitch to you. Oh, no. We're at a meet. We <laughs> we get in an elevator or All God right. forbid you were I, stuck you have, somewhere with me. You have until we get to the 12th floor and then I'm, I'm walking out regardless right. if you're mid-sentence. So let's go. Um, I'm like, oh, my God. Spencer. <laughs> they still have the 10.0 system. Like the Nadia era of when perfection still mattered. But they have great difficulty. Like you can see up a hard wash or a double twisting double layout or single twisting double layout who's each week. I know we're doing a double double layout, but a single twisting double layout that has sure. happened. Yeah. Um, but hard, you can see that stuff. The vaulting is harder than most of the elite vaulting at Worlds. Um, it's you guys. It's so fun. Okay. Also, the other reason we're only on the second floor now because lots of people are getting out. Oh, okay. Um, good. Could be <laughs> lucky for you. The best thing is you get to pick a team and follow them and cheer for them. And like Oklahoma is basically, if you love Ukrainian bars, Oklahoma, UCLA, if you love Soviet floor routines, them, but updated Michigan is like Romania of the tumbling era, Milosevic, 1996. Like that's what you get with these teams. Um, and there's so much happiness and exuberance, which is like the opposite of how those eras of old school gymnastics that we fell in love with were. Everyone's so happy and cheering for each other and it's encouraged and they can do elaborate celebrations, which the FIG doesn't allow. Okay, someone else has just gotten onto the elevator and they're like, mm -hmm. what are you talking about? And now they're in two and they're hooked. Okay. Um, and Spencer's refrained from rolling his eyes while I'm telling him this whole thing. Okay. okay. The other thing is, I mean, Spencer, can you tell this new person who just joined in the elevator what favored elites they can watch in NCAA where they compete every weekend for four months? Um, yeah, a whole bunch. Like um, Jade Carey, who is Jade Carey and Leanne Wong, who have decided not to defer the college gymnastics season to prepare for the Paris Olympics, but rather continue competing in college gymnastics on the lead up to their quest to make the 2024 olympic team you've got Aaliyah finnegan you've got shenikova you've got miley o'keefe at utah mj frazier at cal reagan smith at oklahoma grace mccallum at utah she missed most of last season with injury and now we're going to see how she comes back brooklyn moores at ucla doing all the front tumbling and twisting beautiful um emily morgan british olympic medalist at utah oh and um morgan hurd a little World champion, a little, a little person named Morgan Hurd. Uh, I would say the it's other gonna be thing important for Florida this year, by the way, super Especially important talking about Riley McCusker getting injured. Yes. And Kayla DeCello's deferring and Trinity has graduated and it's like Leanne and Morgan. It's very interesting. It's getting Morgan. It's get, you're in the lineup. Yeah. All really Morgan. Time. You're in the lineup. Yeah. The, so if that isn't enough to convince you, I would also tell you it's uh -huh. like, remember when there was risk, originality and virtuosity it's like that still is in college gymnastics with the 10.0 system so if you love like the golden age of the code where someone could just do because virtuosity mattered a whole their series was just rolling forward sideways backwards <laughs> on beam like okay. that still kind of thing still exists doing unusual things like flares like all the interesting things that you don't need that you don't have time for because you have to stuff so much difficulty into elite like just the beautiful things for the spirit of gymnastics are still in NCAA gymnastics and every weekend for four months you don't have to wait for them to only compete like three times a year like elite oh you guys okay but what would you say so someone else got into the elevator and they're like I read an article that said all of this is uh just on the surface and actually everyone's miserable and you have abusive coaches in college gymnastics. Yeah. I mean, college gymnastics is not perfect. Just like many things in, you know, it's got problems like many things in U S culture, like in other sports in gymnastics and corporations, like it's got pet, power dynamics and bad people. But I think the thing is that like supporting the gymnast is one of the great ways that you can kind of help level that and support them directly. And they have a whole team around them, which is something they don't really have an elite. Um, and NIL has really shifted the power dynamic. Um, and the great mm. thing about college gymnastics is like the women are getting paid, like paid, paid. And it's so fun to see that and so fun to see them thriving in that way. And that's one of the things I like to concentrate on and think about when I'm supporting college gymnastics in general. 
Oh, and speaking of that, they pick themes for the meats. Like they might have a pride meat. They might have a a uh, black excellence meat. They might have a pick a cause. They've definitely had it for that too, which makes it extra fun because they do Leos that match. Oh my God. So this year there's a meet um, with all of the teams that have black female head coaches are having a meet together on Martin Luther King day this season. I'm so excited about this. Oh my gosh. And wait, is it, am I imagining this or is there a Dolly Parton meet? I, have, like it, I mean, I, that sounds like something that would happen, but I don't know. <laughs> fact checker, can you check that? I'm pretty sure there's a Dolly Parton meet, or it's like at Dollywood or something. Like, I don't think Dolly's Parton is going to be there, like, judging the meet, even though she should. But I think there's a Dolly Parton-related meet. Um, okay, so now that we've gotten everyone hooked who wasn't already hooked. Okay. Um, and if you guys have more ideas for us for how to hook people on college gymnastics... Um, but especially on college and cocktails and how fun it is, send us an email, gymcastic at gmail.com, or you can put it in the forum because I think we should probably, you know, continue this, the pitch. Mm. All right. So what do we need to know this season? And especially so that our listeners know before everyone else. So they're in yeah. the know. Yeah. So that when like you turn on the first meet and Bart and Kathy welcome you to the NCAA season and Kathy starts telling you what's new, you'll be like, Kathy, I know. Let's talk more about 1978 Worlds. This, yes. is, this is why I want to know all the background stories. Come on. All right. So there's one big rule change this year. Very few rule changes overall. But there's one big one that I think is very interesting. And is co it's very divisive. I love that you did is a it? twinkle sound effect while I said the word divisive. That really, really brought it home. Um, yeah. So basically, the college stick is no more. Allegedly, aka death to the Alabama shuffle, copyright Susan Yaculin, <laughs> when she decided that to start calling college sticks the Alabama shuffle to troll Alabama because um, <laughs> college gymnastics used to have coaches who did things like that instead of, you know, trying to project sportsmanship in news articles, which is very boring. The coaching drama, the other thing we love, oh. the outfits, you guys, the heels, you can't even. Um, I, would you like me to explain the college stick? What yes, this I would. Yeah, we should start with that before we talk about how it's being allegedly eliminated if the judges do what they're supposed to. Right. Uh, tell, tell me about it. Okay. So the college stick is basically when you, you guys have seen this, when someone lands, but they're clearly off balance and are going to either fall over or need to take a step, but they try to fakey salute so hard immediately to cover up the fact that they have not actually stuck as if the judges can't see this and aren't going to know that it wasn't a real stick. That is what the college stick is. There's a mm -hmm. college salute. That's different. We'll get to different that later. Thing. Yeah. But that's what a college stick is. It's trying to fake yeah. that you stuck. Usually, usually you're leaning and you're pretending that your step is like actually just the salute. Like, I stuck already, and now I'm just doing an elegant salute to the side. I'm just turning and jumping because I'm so happy I'm about that I'm so stick. happy. Everything went great, and there yeah. were no deductions at all. That is, I heard, going away, Spencer. So can you explain okay. this new rule that I'm yeah. so excited about? Okay, so the new rule says, on vault, uneven bars, and balance beam, failure to hold finishing position for one second is a deduction of 0 0.05, a half-tenth deduction, the smallest deduction you can take in college gymnastics. So basically, what that means is, at the end of the routine, you have to show a controlled finish position, and that's defined specifically as legs straight, arms up, and you have to hold it in the same direction that you landed. So you can't move to the side to do it. You have to still be facing wherever you landed. If you don't, half a tenth off in addition to all the previous deductions, like all the actual applicable landing deductions. And then there's another 0 0.05 if you don't uh, hold your finished position. The point being to clearly show that you have control of your landing and have finished your routine. Like basically it it's not a stick if you can't hold your feet in that position for one second, like you haven't stuck. So I think feel like the point is to, um, Maybe like to try to eliminate some of the tens that even civilians can tell aren't tens. 
Like the really where it's like, even I know Nadia didn't stick her dismount on that first 10 at the Olympics in 1976 and it shouldn't have been a 10. Like we can all see that. So maybe that's the, the intent here. Yeah. Uh, I'm obsessed with this. I love it. It's going to be the greatest thing. And I hope that we see gymnasts like actually stand there with their arms up facing the way they came from. They Mm -hmm. cannot turn. Mm -hmm. And count 1001 or one mississippi or one alligator how do you count your one second one (laughs) of course you do uh yeah i hope we see them mouthing it Mm, and that's and then they do their salute that is what i'm waiting for i'm so i don't want this do you think the judges are actually gonna do it because we've had other seasons (sighs) in nca where they were like oh you can't pause on beam and then Mm -hmm. that was thrown out after the first weekend of meets or you have to bring your heels together and then they're like oh wait we forgot um yeah usually that's what happens the fact that the judges have been putting out like newsletter educational material and q a the judges committee and a whole like q a quiz makes me think that they're like on this one a little bit more and are intent on applying it so i'm a little more optimistic because of that i do want to state emphatically um that this for the the gym nerd like in gym nerd terms Mm -hmm. this is now college gymnastics saying like you're required to land with the unbridled self-confidence of Svetlana Horkina, where you stand <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly where you finished, put your arms up, and bathe in the assuredness that you are the chosen one for at least one second before doing anything else. Yeah. That is now what's required of you. Mm-hmm. And honestly, yeah. that's what you should be doing because you are you made it to college gymnastics. You're a total badass and should have the self-confidence of Svetlana Horkina. Yeah, that's like if you had if you were a college coach who had a gymnast who was like, wait, what are we supposed to do now? Svetlana Horkina 1997 World's Event Final Beam Dismount. Just that's, show what, it you're to spo- them. that's what you're supposed to do. That's exactly the hot right. pink Leo. I, I would want leather. this to be, if she weren't such a horrible person in real life, I'd want this to be called the Horkina rule. But I feel like also we don't need anything named after <laughs> Svetlana Horkina. But um, yeah, it's basically that. Yeah. I so, love this. Put this on I, a GIF loop on all yeah. the video screens in mm-hmm. your gym. Yeah. As I alluded to before, the WCGA, which is the Women's Collegiate Gymnastics Association, did release a quiz about finishing position and what's deducted and what's not and what counts, which is very helpful. Very good work. Well done. Um, I'm spicing it up a little bit before I give it to you. So just so you know, these aren't actually what (laughs) it's a little dry. Okay. That's all right. The actual quiz. I'm spicing it up for you a little bit. So. Oh, wait, pause for update before we do the quiz. Okay. Um, Okay. The make it count spectacular partnered, 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 they partnered with Dolly Parton. <laughs> partnered with the Dolly Parton Stampede Dinner attraction. That's this a meet. And there's work. a Dolly Parton Stampede Dinner attraction. What do you think it is? Like her wigs are at every table, and you get to eat with one. Like medieval I don't know times. What a stampede Dinner attraction is, but I hope there is an entire stampede of bulls and Dolly's riding the lead bull. I think that's what it should be. (laughs) And if not, you missed an opportunity. I do think she, Dolly Parton is a genius for never having her hair done and just wearing wigs. Think of the time you save, honestly, to just enjoy your life. Now they just need to do that for makeup. Just, you just wig, a wig for makeup. That is my future request to save all the women of the world and men who love to do their makeup uh, time. Okay. So. Okay. I'm ready for the quiz. So question number one, what if you forget that this is a rule, understandably, because there's a lot you have to deal with, and you just do the college stick. So you land kind of out of control, kind no. of under control for a quarter second, leaning back, and then you slide your one foot and you turn to the side and salute the judges. Half tenth. Yes. Half tenth in addition to your landing deduction, because yeah. that's also a step on landing. Yeah. You have to count one Mississippi. Standing up straight with your arms over your head. Or that's it. Half tenth. Forever. Correct. Yes. 
for, at least until everyone forgets about this rule. Um, okay, so what <laughs> if you are amazing and perfect, and you stick your landing in a perfect, biomechanically safe Kohei Uchimura squat with your arms out in front, and then you hold that stick position for 10 seconds to soak in the glory as roses rain down upon you from the heavens. And, and then you turn to, and then you turn to the judges and salute. Half tenth. Mm-hmm. Half tenth. Correct. Because you can't just hold your your stick position. You have to actually stand up straight for one second because you have to soak it in. If nothing else, soak it in. Next question. Okay, what if you stick your landing and then you straighten your legs? arms up start to soak in your landing and then your team's official emotional support gay runs up and immediately love tackles you out of excitement for stick oh no they're gonna give you a half tenth deduction they are gonna give you a half tenth deduction and the thing i love is that that not in those terms but that example is included by the women's collegiate gymnastics association they're like what if you did everything right but your team was so excited they ran onto the floor and ruined <laughs> your one second and it's like no that's a deduction so you can get <laughs> you can get deducted for your teammates which i kind of love yeah, which is very important because honestly, how many people would have stuck their landing if not for their team rushing the mat before they were they <laughs> barely touched the ground, which is yeah. a genius technique, might I add. But I love that they included this. This these are the, the true college gymnastics fan judges mm -hmm. who are writing this. They understand. This is okay. a real quiz, by the way, you guys. Like we just put up a picture of not, it if you're a visual not listener. These He's questions. not making this up. This they is didn't the say emotional support gay, yeah, but <laughs> the, the women's collegiate. Gymnastics Association <laughs> did not say that. <laughs> That's a classification that Jessica and I have come up with because to be successful as a college gymnastics team, you need a gay man on your staff doing something who is there to make everyone feel great about themselves. Everybody knows that. It's a fact. Yeah. Okay. Last question. What if you just eat it on your dismount, face plant, and then get up and immediately stomp off the mat and start cursing out your entire team for distracting you? Oh my God, so many deductions, but an extra <laughs> half tenth because you didn't hold your ending straight up and down. Incorrect. <gasps> there is an exception for falls. So if, if you, you fall on your dismount, you they're splat? like, we already feel bad enough for you. You don't have to hold your finishing position. That's so nice. <laughs> but it has to be on your dismount. Yeah, it's on your dismount. It's not just like if you fell elsewhere in your routine. No one cares You can't about that. just stop your routine and, yeah, yeah have a... So, like, yeah. it's a real shame because you can't, like, fall... Like, if you purvised, if you fell completely off the podium and then onto the judges, but you have to, like, show a finishing position where you finished. So you're, like, standing on top of the laptop and have to do, like... <laughs> You're standing on the judge's lap and you have to do like extended legs, arms You're above your head. Rattling the judge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> holding your arms up over your head. There's some practical Thank considerations God. there, I think. Oh my God. Okay. Well, all right. I got one wrong. That was bound to bound, it was to, bound happen. to happen. But you know, good job. I think you'd I think you'd probably su successfully avoid this deduction. Yeah. Oh my God. The soaking it in, holding it for three seconds. Yeah. That's the best. I'm. That's the best part of my routine. I'm so good at that. <laughs> you, so on the, the other hand, the adoration. Yeah, that's why I'm the one at the end of the live shows who talks to everybody and sticks around yeah. forever. And eventually, yeah. Spencer just disappears. Yeah. He just ghosts us. We're like, where's Spencer? He had enough of soaking in the admiration. He's right. out of here. Yes. Okay. So thoughts. It sounds like you're in favor. Like overall, in favor of this rule. Yes, but I would like them to add this on floor as well for holding the ending pose for three well, seconds you already Maybe. do have to hold it's your in there but no one enforces it well, spencer yes. yes which is kind of my issue like i'm positive ish on this rule but i have some issues because basically it's one of those things that shouldn't actually be needed because the deductions for like steps and control already exist like the everything that you need to take to ensure that people are showing a stick already exists. They just aren't being taken. So they've kind of added a redundant, I guess, rule in order to be like, actually, you need to take this. You need to you, you need to actually ensure that a stick is a stick and isn't escaping without deduction for a not stick. Um, I would prefer it if you just had to stay still rather than showing the finishing position. Like my Kohei example where you're in a squat and you're you've stuck. I think if you hold that 
that should be that sufficient. Should count. And then yeah. you can just salute the judges or whatever. Like that's that's a stick. You've shown a stick. That's you've shown control. That's sufficient. And you shouldn't then have to do like standy up, arms above the head, do to do. So that's my little so I'm positive esque on this rule. Yeah. I have some quibbles, obviously. Wouldn't be me if I didn't. I think they had to add that for this year. Maybe they'll get rid of it and add just the Kohei stick for later. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think they had to add it to really emphasize it this year. To just be like, it's going to look ridiculous. It's going to be back to like level three when they're like, ladies present. And everybody puts their arms up in the air or whatever they call it. Uh, well, I can't stand that. Ladies present. Every time I hear that in a meet, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even with this. Anywho, you guys, you know how I felt about rules in general as a youth felt. and as an adult. Felt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Um, okay. So now we know the most important rule. We've been quizzed rule. on yeah. it. The new, we should be set on the new rule. We love this. Um, now we have to play being in the know mm-hmm. and who you're going to be a fan of. So, you know, now before all the bandwagoners get on later, you're yeah. going to be the first. Yeah. The, the Like the level 10s that you can like be obsessed with before everyone else knew about them. So then later on when they're like, you know, who's good? So and so you could be like, I told you. I told you in December. Like, <sighs> come on. Like yeah. We told you Gabby was back training a year before. okay so someone i want to talk about hannah scheibel i think we're saying scheibel we'll find out how we pronounce scheibel that's how you Um, say it if it's a german word it's scheibel okay at oklahoma who one thing we know about her from her level 10 career is that she is not afraid to do a routine with like a big character choice like she had the like dropping the ice cream cone routine which the fact that i even know a level 10 floor routine by way of being able to describe it is unique i think rare because usually it's just like dance 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 bye um this is a routine with like some big performance some silent film acting a choice an intent and uh, also she can tumble and she's going to Oklahoma with KJ Kindler. And I feel like that's a match made in heaven because yep. you all, she already has someone who's like not afraid to do something that might be a little weird or that people are going to think is strange or maybe have opinions about. You were already excited to do that as a club gymnast at college. Like it's, it's over, it's over for everyone else. So I think that's, it's a perfect match and I'm very excited to see where that goes. Yes. Uh, I love this. I love this for KJ. Uh, I love this for Oklahoma, but especially for KJ, because can you imagine this stuff? I mean, basically, she mimes hearing the ice cream truck, running to the ice cream truck, Mm -hmm. ordering her ice cream, being excited, showing all the other kids, having some ice cream, the ice cream falling off the cone, being upset, and then she's in a nightclub. And then you do a double tap. Yeah. (laughs) As you do when you drop your ice cream cone. That is, those are the yeah, rules. You have that's to how you get over it. Yeah. You double back and you're like, I'm better than ice cream. Watch this. Better I, than ice cream. Whoa. That's how you should feel about yourself when you <laughs> land and when show you, that's your the la- That's the landing <laughs> position rule. <laughs> okay. We also need to talk about Chloe LeCourcier, uh, who is at Alabama, who is someone we did talk about at least once before, because of her video of that layout Jaeger full that she was doing. Yes. But also, like, so many tens coming on bars. Like, her bars is going to be, you know, a thing. It's, like, I was trying to think of all the gymnasts that she reminds me of because she's just so beautiful. She is, like, um, the uh, Oklahoma... If She's, like... If an Oklahoma bars worker going to Alabama, this is what she looks like. Or like shades of Corey Hartung, leaps like Ali, uh, Alex McMurtry, like power like Alex McMurtry that's unexpected in her leaps. Like you think she's just going to be someone who's flexible, but then like she does like her switch full and goes up after the switch. Like what? Um and Riley McCusker level presentation. 
this is how I feel about wow, her. Wow, you are you are on board. I have a lot. I'm really, really excited about her. And I also hope that her last name is pronounced La Corsier. Because French. There you but go. Sure. I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> Alabama really got the ninja level 10s this year. Because they also mm. have Jameson Sears. And both she and Chloe La Corsier are going to um, overlap for one year with Luisa Blanco. Who we just saw qualified at the Olympics. Representing Columbia. And she's a huge star at Alabama. And so like this is, I feel like, the year. Uh, maybe a test for the new Alabama. Like mm -hmm. for maybe a more alabama e finish in the postseason. Yeah, because you know Alabama used to win a lot, and that hasn't been happening lately. So, yep, and they definitely have like the staff to do it. I think like they have such a great coaching staff, and it's so fun. And I'm very, I'm excited to see what they do. Uh, Jameson Sears also has a the author of a double twisting uh, layout on floor with a full that is like straight as a board. A double twisting layout with a full. Oh my god, what did I just say? A full twisting double layout. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> double twisting layout with a full. Leave that to Jade and Samo. <laughs> full twisting double layout that is straight as a board, which is the kind of thing you could see in college gymnastics. These kind of skills happen. So I hope she brings it. I really really love her. She's like yeah, I'm excited to see her. Uh, Georgia is getting yeah. Nastia. <laughs> this Basically. is what I was saying. Um, so, like, Georgia, speaking of teams that, like, your freshman class has the gymnast to get you back much closer to where you traditionally finish, I think that's also the case for Georgia. Like, they have the athletes in this new class and a couple who are sophomores this year to really step the results up again if it all comes together. Like Jada Battle and Addie Wall have your Chenko one and a half on vault. Um, Holly Snyder is great on beam. But the one I want to talk about the most is Lily Smith because we've been calling her Brunastia for Brunette Nastia because you watch her and you're like, oh, it's Brunette Nastia. <laughs> she, I mean, I could she be more like Nastia? I don't, I don't even know how she could be more Nastia ish. Like she's, she's extremely Nastia. That's all I can she, think about when I watch her. I'm like, oh, it's Nastia. Yeah, you guys don't even, like, other than her hair color, literally, like, down to the puppy feet, you guys. Like, her feet look so perfect because they actually look like they're maybe one size too big for her legs. But it makes her toe, oh, my God, her toe point even more beautiful, you guys. I really want a DNA test because I feel like they've got <laughs> cousins or something. She's so, I, it is really, like. Bronostia. I thought you meant when you said Bronostia, I thought you meant like bro Nostia. But then I was like, obviously, Spencer's not gonna put bro on bro, anything. It's Nostia. <laughs> <laughs> I have to wash my ears after hearing you say that. <laughs> I can almost see you saying like bruv, like they say in the UK, bro. Sure. Nostia. <laughs> uh we need to have them do something side by side because they literally could be. Yeah, sisters. It's remarkable watching. Yeah. So I think I think the, um, she's going to have some fans. I think yeah. it's going to be some like... some fans. <laughs> yeah, go to Georgia and watch everything they have posted uh with what she's training right now cuz oh my god. Yeah. I'm excited to have like another gymnast that I'm so like when Victoria Wynn was at Georgia I was like, "Oh, everything she does." And now I'm going to be like, "Lily Smith there you that go. was Lily yeah. Smith, in case you didn't catch that. <laughs> okay, thank oh, you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Lily <laughs> Smith. An appropriate use of the twinkle. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, there are a number of others. I've been going through and watching some of the level 10 athletes. I think Priscilla Park at Arkansas is someone I'm excited to see her on bars in particular. Watch out for Sophia Esposito at Oregon State, especially if Jade doesn't do all the events, like maybe she's not going to, and like, you know, take it easy a little bit. Because Oregon State has been really strong these last couple of years, but it's like very much reliant on Jade being like, I can get a 995 just by waking up, like deal with that. Um, Sophia Esposito, really strong um, as an all-arounder. She won her division at Level 10 Nationals uh, this year, but particularly her standing switch split jump on beam you know how i like love a standing 
switch. Like when jump. Evie did it in jeans and high heeled boots yeah. at our live show. <laughs> yes, exactly like that. We can't all be Evie. That, those are the rules of the world. But I love this element for her. And it's really well extended, a really nice one. So that's, I'm excited. It's for so it. crazy because, like, this is something you do as a drill for switch leaps is like you stand on the ground and do them. And then you do them with like the rubber bands tied to each ankle. And she just, she's so good. She does it in her actual beam routine because mm -hmm. it's an actual skill. It's just, most people can't just stand there and do it as perfectly as she does. So yeah. yeah, yeah, it's excellent. Very interested. We were talking about Florida. They're going to need new people to step up and it's going to be kind of an it takes a village thing one of them that i have an eye on is danny ferris who we've seen vaulting a beautiful yurchenko one and a half so when you're looking for like you don't have trinity's vault you don't have kayla cello's vault like who are you looking for she's one that i think a lot of people haven't heard of but is gonna be i would think a person also looking forward in the same vein to kai and mayhew at cal who has been kind of under the radar, but like a potential vault and floor star with how easy her Yurchenko one and a half has been for her for like years as a level 10, where it's like, oh, you're overdoing this and have been for a long time. And especially for Cal, where they're still trying to get like up there on the difficulty on vault, where they have a lot of like Yurchenko fulls, which are lovely Yurchenko fulls, but it's still like you can do a Yurchenko full amazingly and beautifully and be like Maddie Williams and get a 9875. And then Oklahoma's like, that's cute. 9875. <laughs> is that what people get? <laughs> so adding Yurchenko one and a half is really important to them. And she's another one I've been in, interested in watching level 10 videos, which once again, I would like to register my complaint about not being able to watch level 10 nationals with like yes. gymnast IDs. Yes. It's just a whole, it's just one video of the session with right. no IDs and you don't know where everyone is. It's really lacking. It's really hurting our ability to prognosticate about uh, college <laughs> gymnastics. And I would like to register the desire to have athlete identifications and links, not just for me, but maybe for like them. Well, yes. And for their marketing themselves to colleges. So of USA Gymnastics or whoever's in charge of the Flip TV, if you could please start a project called Project Nostradamus for yeah, prognosticating really, accurately yeah, to get be... lower thirds on e every gymnast who's competing uh -huh. for their families and stuff. For their families. It's, 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 for, them. it's, it's for them. For, yeah. you know, for us specifically. Uh -huh. Also, the thing I like when I'm p telling people why they'll love um, NCAA Gymnastics is I'm like, you like watching Vault at uh, world championships right do you want to see 99 percent of the vaults that are done better than uh than 90 percent of the vaults at world championships and say gymnastics is for you like stick after stick after stick double twisting your chankos one and a half your chankos put kapayavas all of it it's all there yeah except vault and with great beautiful form that's the other thing Oh, all I have to Oklahoma. Uh, what year was it that they won when Brenna went last? That vault at NCAA Championships, mm -hmm. that vault lineup, it was like that all year. So spectacular. That never had, there's never been a vault rotation like that ever in a world championships, uh, elite level gymnastics ever. Mm. Period. The closest would probably be. What was the one with banana Jesus and no, there weren't I'm... even like, there aren't even like three vaults like that in a row. <laughs> yeah. I would, yeah, I anyway. mean, I would say I'm anticipating the commentary from our dear friends who are university of Michigan alums who listen to the show that the greatest vault rotation in college gymnastics history was Michigan's vault rotation when they won in 2021. Okay. That's which also is true. Up there. It's up that's at least up, at minimum up there. Yes. <laughs> that's I what I was thinking like, about as you were saying it. I was like, you're getting a text. I mean, there's you're getting many a text on like Tuesday. That's, I'm pretty this sure. Is the thing. I'm saying there's many, many, many rotations of vaults yes. like that in college gymnastics. <laughs> you can see every week. Uh, that's just an example. But I was also like, oh, no, like Pam Chankova is going to come back with like a full like 1970s or Uncle Tim yeah. will be like, oh, here's the real from the, the real, first like, blah, blah, blah's ever done. And everyone's sticking it. Here are all of the people who didn't make the Soviet Olympic team competing domestically and sticking their perfect vaults. 
every That's time. Yeah. And they're all like double twisting your chinkos in like 1979. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be yeah. like, ah. But anyway, college gymnastics is great. Do you yeah. have any more that we should look for from maybe teams that have like beautiful dance and form? We're going to continue this process. So okay. we have a couple more episodes before the end of the year. We're going to talk more about college gymnastics, like who we think might be the top teams, some other people to watch, returning gymnasts. So, but this is just, you know, phase A, some new new names to learn. Phase A. I like it. Okay. And remember, if you want to get into Fantasy Gym, there's many leagues, but a lot of people like Gymlytics. Gymlytics.io. G-Y-M-L-Y-T-I-C-S dot I-O. Check that out. All right. Mm-hmm. Spencer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We put out our very first, and if you're a visual listener, we can go through this on the screen as we're discussing. Uh, we have an internet, we have a domestic power ranking, and then we've d- put out our first international power ranking. And yes. let me just before the Spencer gets to my case. world elite power rankings. Yeah. I'm giving it the, its official branding title, Jessica, for branding purposes. World elite power ranking. Thank yeah. you. Branding is important. Uh, so the thing before anyone <clears throat> has feelings, this is not an all around ranking. This is like if you're on the playground and you're picking teams and you're basically like, uh, who's the first person you're going to pick for your team? And it's three up, three count finals. Keep that in mind. You're picking the best people on each event to put on your team. Mm-hmm. And you might there might be an all-arounder in there. But this is the world elite power ranking. It's not an all-around ranking. So the way this is put together is I put together my ranking, Spencer puts together his ranking. Uh Fact Checker has his ranking cuz he's really I put this. together my ranking, then Jessica puts together her ranking All right, like 9 Spencer days later. Always does his homework first, okay? <laughs> is that a surprise to anyone? No. I'm busy keeping the lights on, making this operation mm. run. Mm. Spencer's doing his homework. So uh yeah and then fact checker who's long time into sports and the sports balls and the rankings and all of this stuff also puts his uh feelings in and puts everything together he reconciles he reconciles our, the our, two lists our lists which the, are the, the, the real hero here he's the neutral party in the yeah. middle who can be like what and then puts it all together so thank you to the true hero fact checker <laughs> okay <laughs> Now, so my quest. So we have a new one. It came out several days ago, and so I don't see Jessica's rankings. I just see I do mine, and then I see the final result. We don't look. They're separate so, documents. Uh, my question for you is: Why do you hate Flavia? <laughs> because I opened this ranking and I was like, Flavia's weirdly low for how high I put her in my ranking, and I would like the world to know that you sabotaged her in the power rankings and would like to know if you need to apologize to the world for your behavior in this in at this moment first of all yeah um i just be we just were picking different people for our teams at different times and i might have had feelings about people that i maybe made like ethora sixth all around the world uh Higher up in my ranking than Flavia. This wasn't an all around ranking, but it's not. It's not an all around ranking. But I'm just saying, would I want? Would I pick Ethora first for my team? Yes, that's yeah. what so I'm saying. Did Flavia, Flavia win a medal up, on floor? Yeah. Yes. Flavia ended up ninth in our rankings. I had her in fifth in mine, and then I was like, "What did Jessica do?" <laughs> I this is the thing. Um, I think about it as like who would I want on my team? So I'd pick Simone and Andrade and Chilise first, because I yeah, know they're gonna be agree, top on we everything. Agree on that for one person, right. I think. And then I'm like, who's uh gonna be who's the bar world champ? I want them. I already yeah, have the other too. bars medalists on my team. Um, and then I'm like, well, who's gonna win a medal if I get them on bars? I feel like bars is like key. Everybody thinks fault, but so then I was like D'Amato, because if she hits. Okay, but that like that's not what a po- the power rank, like she didn't hit most of the time. At work. I know, but she will. She can. 
<laughs> Look how well she did when she finally hit her routine. So I just put like people that I thought were like the best on each event, but I didn't. Rent. So how did you do? Did you take everyone that meddled or put I them? I used in that the as as a consideration. But yeah, I'm like only Simone, Andrade, and Shailise were more decorated at Worlds than Flavia because she won an individual floor medal and she helped and Brazil team. to the team silver, and that was her best you know performance of the year. So I'm like, who did the best? If you say were to say who had the best worlds, Simone, Andrade, Shailise, and then maybe Fl- I put Chu Chi Yun fourth because of Bar's gold, and then I put Flavia fifth. But I'm I like, have Chu Chi Yun for uh, f- yeah fourth too. So we uh, both put her in the same place. Is then Flavia as the other person who had a great the the best worlds and was the most accomplished is currently acting at reigning as one of the most accomplished gymnasts in the world and not where jessica would you like to tell the people you put her in your ranking i'm 17th 17th but uh i 17th. have 17th kalia namor also yeah. meddled on bars i yeah, have her up higher up i also have people like kalia lincoln because had she been here she would have done really well and maybe would have taken some spots from Flavia. I'm just saying. Do I want that in my heart? No. But do I believe Kalia Lincoln should be ranked up there? Yes, I do. The ranking is very hard for me, Spencer, because I want every you. Every all the people on my first. list didn't even yeah. get up there because I had an extra five people on my list. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised there were weren't more than an extra five. Oh, I did have more than five. One, two, Basically, three, four, five, six. <laughs> the point of this segment is for me to say it's not my fault. <laughs> I okay, didn't do we'll, this. We'll have another power ranking and there'll yeah. be another opportunity. We need to do this for um, NCAA season for individuals because like there's teams rankings and people do like team power rankings, but I don't oh, think weird. anyone does like individual NCAA power ranking. And I think that would be really fun. Yeah, which basically we're going to, we'd pick our fantasy team, basically. have a fantasy team draft between the two of us for our, the best individuals we'd want on a team. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like the play, it doesn't really matter where the placement is. It's really, if That's they're the on the list. That's the whole point. The whole point of the ranking, ranking list is what ranking, the placement like, is. You made the list out of all the gymnasts in the whole entire world. Oh my <laughs> God. I don't even, this is an abomination. Like, these are all my team. Everybody's my team. <laughs> the look on Spencer's face, you guys. You can put up three people on each event. You don't want <laughs> Flavia on any event? You yes. don't want that beam? You don't want that floor? <clears throat> all right. When all we right. do our next all right. ranking. All right. You're we'll going to not put Flavia on it out of... Spiked. That's 100% <laughs> what's going to happen. You're not going to rank her at all. I mean, I have Gatarova ranked in there because I feel like Gatarova also would have meddled and she can still come back. So I had her ranked higher yeah. okay, than Flavia because when she comes back, she will win more than Flavia. <laughs> yeah, but right now she's injured. Yes, but this is also there's people with potential on my list. So when they they're ranked. But when they come back, I want them in on my team for when they make a comeback. Do we have a rule that if you're injured, you can't be on the ranking? No, we have the rule is you rank whatever you want, and then Spencer criticizes you for it. <laughs> That's the rule of the the power rankings. Do you have some facts that you'd like to tell everybody? No. <laughs> okay. Very good. I think you already got your facts out. All right. Are you ready for Gym Turnet News? Yes, I'm ready for Gym Turnet News. Okay, excellent. Um, because, all right. A lot of people were talking about this this mm-hmm. week. This next thing we're going to discuss. And there are some nuances that we want to just point out in the, the this discussion. So... We told you guys a few weeks ago about Russia and Belarus at the Olympic Games. And basically the FIG had finally put out their ad hoc criteria, which effectively made it it makes it impossible for any Russian athlete to compete in Paris. Mm -hmm. Um, Basically, it's like if you support the war in any way, you can't compete. So unless they whip out some brand new 
senior who has had never had a social media and doesn't train anywhere that anyone else trains, no one can make it. And they have to apply, there's an investigation, and then the criteria after that is you have to do a drug test and you have 60 days to register for the meet. So this week, so European Gymnastics, which is like a federation for Europe, okay? Like Just the like Pagoo, yeah. yeah, like the Pagoo or, you know, the Asian Gymnastics Federation or whatever mm -hmm. it is, um, and puts on their continental championships and has the European championships. They voted not to allow any Russian or Belarusian athletes to compete at the European championships. Correct. They were like, FIG, we see your criteria. Mm -hmm. We give it the double middle fingers. Yeah. That is what happened. So where this is the most relevant is in terms of the European championship, which European gymnastics organizes that has one Olympic spot available. Whoever places the highest in the all around who is eligible at this year's coming European championships gets an Olympic spot for themselves. Were Russia to be allowed in by the IOC, this is an area where they would have pinpointed as somewhere where Russia can qualify an individual to the Olympics because they could, you know, they have plenty of gymnasts who could win the European championship in the all around. They could get a spot. European gymnastics is saying no. That's out, that's out the window. So even if the IOC says, yes, we'll allow Russians at the Olympics under limited circumstances, you're not getting the European continental qualification spot. So a lot of people were interpreting this as that's it. Russia can't, can't qualify at all. And I think that, um, and just so you know, that the AP, according to their report, the FIG made a statement that they had taken note of European gymnastics federation. <laughs> they're, they're, they, as we've taken note that they said they double a, middle fingers. They finger. sent a red receipt on <laughs> the European gymnastics statement. Yeah. <laughs> they drove by honking the horn, uh, saying F you out the window around the corner from the um, headquarters. <clears throat> I got that. So um, the thing is that Russia or Belarusian athletes could still qualify via the apparatus world cup series in 2024 if again they pass the ad hoc criteria which fig had to put together to meet the ioc rules and they do the drug test and they register 60 days before you don't even have to register 60 days before honestly because if you don't register on time you just pay a fine so and also the fig can do whatever they want so the last apparatus world cup is uh on 420. um for those who partake, I do not. <laughs> I don't know why I did that because I could care less. Um, it's because I just listened to normal gossip and there was a whole pot related, um, which I was horrified by. And when like I would have been out of there so fast, a crazy family story in there. Anyway, so that means 60 days before that, which it doesn't even matter because you can just register late. Um, that's the last opportunity period for... Uh, a Russian or Belarusian athlete to qualify. Yeah, you have to be ranked well at the end of the series, and you take your top three scores, you know, at the various events of the series, which is from February to April. Basically, which means the deal you can't is, just show up at the last one. You can't just show up and go to one. the Olympics. Yeah, you have to well, do at least I mean, three. Theoretically, you could win it and get your thirty points, and that could be enough. But you know, um, basically, for all intents and purposes, there are so many roadblocks at this point that I don't see how Russian athletes are going to qualify to the Olympics between the IOC still having to say that, you know, decide that they're allowed, which they haven't. The ad hoc rules basically eliminating everyone because you can't have supported the war. The timing of getting your approval that you're allowed to be an authorized neutral athlete and then going to the, like, there are so many things that I'm like, practically, we're not going to see any Russian athletes qualify, even if the IOC says they're allowed. Yeah, I think that practically when they came out the ad hoc rules, it they wrote them specifically so that no no Listanovas could qualify. Um cuz it's obviously she would be the one, I think, uh who makes it. But yeah, um is it still technically possible? Yes. Is it likely 99% no. Um and how does the European decision affect this? I mean, only one of the Apparatus World Cups in 2024 is in Europe. Um, but I mean, what are they, you know, There's what are they going to do? There's and Baku and Azerbaijan competes in Europe as for a gymnastics purpose. Oh, Azerbaijan's Europe now. Everyone's Europe. 
Everyone's in I Europe. can't keep track of all everywhere that's Europe anymore. Um, but for the European Gymnastics Union or Federation or whatever they call themselves now. Uh, so I, you know, but does that matter that they're part of that? It would the European Federation like sanction them or be like, no, we can't. I mean, you know, I don't think it's going to happen, but just technically there's still a, kind of a chance. Um, okay. So next up, Spencer, we have been talking about this for years refresh my memory okay so the here's the the thing you know how we talked about how like remember when lsu built that um i was about to call it a chamber <laughs> they built a chamber for the built football the chamber team. Of secrets yeah <laughs> they built a chamber for the football team that looks like you're flying first class on like emirates but it's the football locker room and it has like full okay. beds in it with fancy I lighting. I love that you asked if I remember that. Like I've paid attention to that at all ever. <laughs> okay. So you remember. And mm. I was like, all of these men's teams getting so much money spent on them. How is the amount of money that you spend on a team not equivalent to giving them? Like, how does that not violate Title IX? And Title IX says that. Um, you have to provide the same opportunity and is not an incredible training room, an incredible locker room. All of those things roll into the opportunity for them to mm. do well. Right. So there is a new lawsuit and uh, 32 female athletes filed a lawsuit against the University of Oregon who don't have gymnastics um, this past week. Uh, and this is an AP article. Um, alleging that the school is violating Title IX because they are, quote, depriving women of equal treatment and benefits, equal athletic aid, and equal opportunities per to participate in varsity intercollegiate athletics. So um, they are depriving women of equal treatment, and the lawsuit um, came after an investigation published in July by the Oregonian newspaper that showed, are you ready for this? Mm-hmm. 49% of the student athletes at Oregon are women, but only 25% of athletic dollars total and 15% of its recruiting dollars are spent on them. So again, coming down to the budget and how you're spending it. And this is what mm -hmm. I've been saying for years. Why has that this not be taken into? It's clearly not fair. Um, and I'm so excited for the women of Oregon, University of Oregon. You are doing it. I'm so proud of you guys. So the question is, now, what is the precedent? How will this be considered? Are they going to actually go this way? And the way the courts are going, eh, let's just hope it doesn't make it to the Supreme Court. Uh, it's very <laughs> interesting because it gets to the idea, and there's this like, linked to what's happening um, in Utah with NIL and whether yes. it's public or not, because it's the question of whether the money, all of this NIL money that's coming in is part of is this academic information is this academic part of the school or is this like a business because the deal in utah is um the five universities in utah are appealing a ruling by the state records committee that basically says the nil the name image and likeness contracts should be public record and basically most places are treating them as education records so they can't be public because your education record can't be public. And they're like, we're a university. This is an education record. Utah, the state records committee in Utah was like, no, mm, though. No. <laughs> no. They were like, but also, like, <laughs> make it public is what they said. So they were oh, like, I got to use that sound effect, Spencer. Okay, go on. They were like, these are public records. So you could like redact your personal information, like your, you know, address and contact information, but the rest of it is public information and uh, universities in utah are like "Ooh, we don't want that to be true so they are appealing that ruling but it gets back to this idea of if you're considering all of this money then to be education then it should be subject to the title nine rules right so what happens in Utah is going to be super important precedent of course the problem that we're having right so title nine is federal this it covers all states. The states have different NIL rules. And you can see, like, are they going to take this state records ruling into account? 
on a federal level for Title IX. And I argue that they should. Um, but the problem is every single, you know, state has different rules about NIL. And this is why you have some states having 20 people on a team, all who are having their education and living expenses and more covered by the university's collective, which is co collectives are basically like, think of it as a political pack, but for donating money to athletics. <laughs> That's basically what it is. Um, and you have other teams that are like, uh, we, our state does not allow us to just give $60,000 to someone to come and be on the team that's, you know, not on scholarship. Uh, so this is, I, I feel like the thing that's going to happen right now is there's a bunch of uh, women who are going to get really hurt by, and teams that are going to be hurt by the NIL rules and the laws right now. And it's going to take the women of, you know, University of Oregon fighting for the future generations to make things fair, which is how it's always been. It always starts as a giant clusterfuck. And then eventually it goes through the legal system. Things get worked out and it becomes more fair if it's properly regulated and there isn't stuff under the table, which is the great thing about NIL is now things are out in public where they used to all be under the table because all this stuff went on in the past, uh, but it was all against NCAA rules. So, I'm very excited about the future of women's sports and the women of University of Oregon heroes. And I hope more women will join this because it's a class action. I'm pretty sure. Isn't it a class action? So sign up, everybody. Get on board with this. Uh, okay. So if you guys have anything you want us to discuss on behind the scenes on Friday, please put it in the forum or send us an email at gymcastic at gmail.com. Put behind the scenes in the subject. We have a lot of questions to go through. Remember, you can give the gift of Gymcastic as a gift this holiday season at any level. And let us know if you want us to record a little video for the person that you're giving the gift to. Uh, and please let us know all of your thoughts on our international power ranking, world elite power ranking. <laughs> uh, prepare for our first collagen cocktails, which is going to be January 5th. Mm -hmm. Is that when it's going to be? Yes. Um, Season yeah. premiere of collagen cocktails, January 5th. Yes. It's so fun. Um, and uh, don't forget to subscribe on our YouTube. Uh, thank you so much to all of our Club Gym Nerd members. We could not do this without you. You are the best. We appreciate you so much. And until next week, we have more exciting news to talk about. Remember to take off on gay, split on rights, and we'll see you on Friday at noon Pacific for Behind the Scenes.